Okay, how many people have seen Wegado? I might have saw a little bit of it. A little bit of it. She said it was the only movie she ever walked out on. She, okay. Is there any movie she <laughs> Very good. <laughs> That's all she said earlier. <laughs> this is good. Well, we saw, we saw our surrogates movie, which was a spring of, we've had some really good, uh, almost like virtual reality movie, in the sense that, that the technology had just been so attractive that it kind of took over. Which is the way the ego is, it's very seductive and sneaky. This is more, this is more comical, but it also would show you more the underpinnings of trying to use a, a virtual reality. Kind of like in Simone, where Al Pacino, he doesn't, he kind of, it's thrust upon him and he sees a need to come up with a virtual actor because his actress has walked out. He wants to finish his picture, so he has a personal interest. And this is going to be for a sense of protectionism, of protecting, um, it's a presidential election coming up, and so it's going to be using virtual reality to maintain a position. Um, more of as a distractive device, but it's still, uh, it, shows you how the whole world, the world itself is a projection, is a distracted device, and then movies uh, and virtual reality is basically replicating what's happening in the mind. So it's just showing, uh, it's a way, it's a wake-up call. But I think in this case, um, you can see the personal motives coming up and um, it reminds me a little bit of our movie um, Argo. You know, where basically that was based on a true story to try to get the hostages out. It was a staged, there was basically a, a staged movie that was supposed to be good credentials. This is going much, much more beyond like a, a staged movie uh, for credentials. Um, this is actually, has another purpose underneath it. But, it's really fun. I think anything that has a hint of virtual reality is just a great reminder to not take anything seriously. So really, Dustin Hoffman and uh, Robert De Niro do a good job, of, in a very humorous way, mm -hmm. uh, putting, putting together this movie. They're the main actors in the movie. Uh, so I think you're going to enjoy it. It's, it's a little virtual reality, but it's not virtual reality like from the beginning, like some movies we watch, they start out virtual and then you have to try to say what's going on underneath. Right. This is more, it starts out in the linear time world and then it, it's a construct that is being used to fool people. And you might say that this whole world, linear world is being used to fool the mind. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of parallels. Anything we find that's a funny movie that has parallels, that Pretty, pretty good. Mm. Okay, we'll have a good discussion, I'm sure, afterwards. like a spin doctor, he, he tries to spin politics, spin public opinion um, using the media. So he's like the fix, the fix it guy, he's the spin doctor. He's ill, he's the president. I'm going to use the day, at least the day. He said, get that out right now. 
Get them on the phone and tell the jackals how sick he is. We got to get that out before the story breaks. But we are quote responding to it. Mm-hmm. He sure is a bullet and he's got some rash. Well, uh, I, I need a day. I need some running time. I have trouble getting on the dialogue. Do we? Do we have uh, subtitles for it? Turn it up a little. We could turn it's MKV, it. so there should be subtitles. There could be subtitles. <coughs> we could try subtitles with it. And so just to catch everybody up to with the dialogue, it's some Firefly girl and it's some sexual thing with the president. The president's in a, he's running for re-election. He's in China. They've called this guy in to help out with the situation because they're afraid that the story will break and that'll cost the president a re-election. Mm-hmm. So they bring this guy in, he's supposed to be the best, and he's like, tell the president to stay on the ground in China. Oh, he's sick. Tell him he's sick. You know, it's all the, the spin, spin doctor stuff that we've talked about. So, so do we get have we, any subtitles or not? Yeah, or we just to, like okay, that's good. Okay. That's good. You know why? I'll tell you why. Why is the president of China? Uh, trade relations. You're goddamn right. And it's got nothing to do with the B-3 bomber. There is no B-3 bomber. I just said that. There is no B-3 bomber. <laughs> I don't know why these rumors get started. With, excuse me, Senator, that's 11 days to the election. And the president ahead in the polls by Bob? 17%. Accusations have surfaced, which could affect the outcome. I'm more that the White House has announced that the White House has announced that the White House have you seen Wake the Dog? Years ago. Years ago. Well, we just did a, that's what we were watching, we just did a set Did you have a nice visit? Oh, it was just joyful. Have a nice... So joyful. It's joyful. Joyful to be back. <laughs> well, I'll you in on the movie so you can jump right in. The, the president is running for a re-election in 11 days. He's in China. They're bringing in Robert De Niro. Uh, because there was a firefly girl that visited the White House and said that this president had sexual misconduct. So we're getting, we're watching the underpinnings of, of virtual reality okay. to to convey, to persuade, to convey, to distract away from from things. Which is, I was saying, what the whole world is, virtual reality, to right. distract away from what's, really happening. from what's happening in the mind, the, the separation, and all, really to distract away from the light. Because using a lot of dreams and fantasies, all the dreams and fantasies are just to distract away from the love and the light. To distract away from be still mm-hmm. and know that I'm God. It's a big show mm-hmm. to guard mm-hmm. against the light. But this is our metaphor to see Watch it unfold. Mm. Mm-hmm. And we come to Dustin Hoffman pretty soon, the, the movie, Hollywood movie producer. Oh, wow. Kind of like Gargo. My God, this is how a Hollywood producer lives? This is very little Oh, well, get me my veggie shake, Ramon. <laughs> I'm going to turn over in 10 minutes to Tan the, uh, the other side. Uh, do I know you? So, uh, what do you think? <laughs> Roll. Yeah. So, you spend me, you did it, yeah. you did it, you jumped in there and saved the thing, and the thing you would say. That's what you don't Trump is saying. He's a multi well, personally, millionaire. He's thinking, Trump's thinking, I could go for that. Mm-hmm. President of all. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Make a difference. And then he's appealing to rage, like they're appealing to fear mm-hmm. as a distraction. The whole presidential candidate, the whole thing, because, you know, most people are saying now, everything is being bought, you know, money talks, Mm -hmm. so it's just more the greed factor of the ego coming in, but that's why we're going into mysticism. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) More incentive. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. Okay, let's see what they do. Maybe it was... Of course, the president doesn't have to say that we can't. Well, like the right one said, what? it doesn't have to fucking get there as long as you get there. He said that? Connie, what is it exactly you do for the president? Hello, Americans. Pray for me the way you do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
sizes it up. Yeah. So that whole movie is based on this premise that you can you can shift and change perceptions and interpretations using the media and using form and everything and and that seems to be the case, but remember, everything that seems to be everything in this world is not true. So, ultimately, I remember it was the time, uh, some years after 9-11, and uh, Jason was talking to me, and he said, I don't know if I can talk to you about this. I said, oh yeah, you can talk to me about anything. He, he was raised in a conspiracy household growing up, and he says, I, I think Maybe 9-11 was, uh, so I, mean, I hate to even bring it up because, I said, why do you hate to bring it up? He said, because I know you, you, you're going to tell me that it wasn't. And he said, and, and I think it might have been. And so, it's this idea that, that of searching for causes in the world, as if there could have been whether it's an inside job or not. And it's searching for the truth of which one was it an inside job or not. And it's very much like with, with Gary's, you know, book and, um, you know, different questions about whether Artin and Persa actually came to that couch on Maine, or Jimmy Twyman's book, and whether he actually went to Kosovo, and whether there actually is a silent brotherhood, or whether it's fiction, or Mar Marlo Morgan's book, Mutant Messes Down Under, did she actually go walk about with the Aborigines, or was it a fiction, fact or fiction? Mm -hmm. But actually, everything of the linear cosmos is fiction, without exception. So, it's not like there, you can take fiction and you can break fiction up into something that actually happened, called truth, and something that didn't happen, which is called a lie. So, if you take it deep enough, you can see that, that all of linear time is a lie. It's all of linear time is a denial of the truth. It's a denial of spirit. It's a denial of love. So, so that shows you the, in the end, you're not looking for a personal interpretation, because all personal interpretations of absolutely everything in all of time and space and history are wrong. Wrong-minded. Erroneous. And so, that should bring a relief to the mind too, because, you know, you can start to see that any judgment of your personality self or your identity as a person, good or bad, Spiritualized or unspiritualized, whatever you want, those are with the same error. Mm -hmm. That we don't have an external world that actually exists, that you can choose how you want to interpret it. But by perceiving a linear world, that itself is an interpretation that the mind is making, the one mind. So, you can start to see the collapse of of everything. This is why nothing I see means everything. This is why I do not understand anything I see. This is why you shouldn't struggle with the giving up of judgment, because the only awareness you can come to is that you never, ever have been capable of it in the first place. You're not capable of any interpretations good, bad, right, wrong, whatever they are. That's good news. That's, in fact, that's the only way to come back to divine innocence, is start to see, actually, well, I've been mistaken about everything. And the only difficulties that arise is when you think you know something, and you think you can say something is a fact in the world. But it's all interpretation. There are no facts. I remember when I had the students back in 1994, 
93, 94 and everything, and I read this line from the Course, and the line from the Course is, no one can be angry at a fact. So there was this big discussion that broke out from that line, no one could be angry at a fact, what is a fact? They went round and round and round until they realized they couldn't, they didn't understand what the teaching was because they didn't understand what a fact was and they couldn't follow it through. And in the end they said, well, can you give us an example of a fact, if no one can be angry at a fact? I said, I said God is a fact. They said, oh. Can you give us another example? I said, yes, Christ is a fact. But the fact is abstract. And no one could be angry at the abstract. Because why? Because the abstract is love, and it's real. And everything else doesn't exist. Doesn't have any meaning at all. So it's like, that's the kind of, that's what's great about these kind of movies, you start to take it inward in your own mind into divine logic. I say divine logic would, would say that you really are never upset for the reason that you think. You're upset because you see something that's not there, that is a the hallucination. There's an, there's an interpretation being made that doesn't have anything to do with reality whatsoever. And that is the good news of the Gospel. If you follow that, you can also see that, that really, you cannot have an opinion. And you can draw all other kinds of wonderful conclusions too. Isn't it the U.S. Constitution that says, we hold these rights to be self-evident? You cannot have any rights. Either. No rights. That's very freeing. Just kind of cancels out everything. Maybe that's why Lisa chose to stay in the silence today and not go see another story of making something out of nothing, or whatever it seems to be, they all, in the end, they're all the same. But that's what makes it a happy dream, is seeing that they're all the same. Until that point comes, then the mind has interpretations of what it thinks the happy dream should be. And then it pursues those, like a cat chasing its tail, and there's still frustration, chasing something that's not there. It's pretty deep. <laughs> Could have been a labored way to come to something so simple. At the end, of course, the 
killing off the Dustin Hoffman character, that <coughs> that exposes the ego pretty worldly. That it's a death wish. Basically, his murder it didn't matter what happened or how succeedingly successful the deal is. It's a lie, but we can't let anybody know about the lie. The lie has to be protected. The lie has to be kept secret, even unto death. And then, thanks, thankfully in the Course, Jesus says, well, you no, you can't escape from this world through, through even through dying. He says, the ego will pursue you beyond the grave. Mm -hmm. That's good that he's put that in there. In case there's any thought of doing it in your next lifetime, or, you know, off in the future, that's, that's another, another ego trick. <coughs> the idea that you'll wake up in the future. Even in part of the Course, where Jesus says, the ego likes the idea of return to God. Mm -hmm. Because then it can make the idea seem difficult. That's amazing. The ego likes the idea of return to God. That really shows you how sneaky, how deep it is. Which is good, because then it brings it, brings it home. It's like, you don't need to start a new religion of, of the people who believe that it's possible to return to God. <laughs> That's not it either. As optimistic as that may sound, it's still, we're going for an experience, so I'm you know, doing that too. And what was that line at the beginning about the, the tail wagging the dog? Mm -hmm. Why does the dog wag its tail? Because his head is smarter than its tail. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't the tail that wagged the dog. What do you think, Nikita? I oh, know, it's depressing. <laughs> depressing. <laughs> it's just heavy and depressing. I'm like, what do you do? I don't know, like, what do you do? I don't know, it's just super depressing. Everything is depressing. And then, like, what are you going to do? Like, what if it's, like, there, like, this desire to go home? Like, what do you do? It's almost like, there's not even no way out anymore. Well, the desire is that it's just, it's not settling for any kind of concept. He does say in the Course, truth will be returned to your awareness by your desire, as it was lost by your desire for something else. So, that's all, that's the only thing that seems depressing is this, it's like this exposure of, of this false wish or this false belief. Even now, like right now, it's like, you know, you're allowing those, that feeling and those emotions to come up and, and that question to arise and that, those thoughts to come, which is, that's why we have the morning <coughs> meetings, that's why we, that's the purpose behind everything is to, to have the allowance for 
whatever, that, that frustration, that sadness, that whatever, to, to rise up and move through instead of, instead of just being accepted as true. It's like he says, what is temptation but the wish to make illusions real, so it's just exposing, it's not hiding the wish, it's not hiding the wish. It's like at the end of uh, Simone, we're fine with fake, just don't lie about it. So, so that's what we do every single day is we practice not lying about it, not drawing a conclusion. Even if there's a feeling of intense sadness. It's just trapped. Everything is just a trap. It's like there's no hope anymore. Before there was some kind of a hope, now there's just like tra pure trap everywhere. Just nothing but this left. It just gets worse and worse. <laughs> I know that that started to be the feeling that seemed to be there and that's where, for me, it was like a lot of tears. It was like years of tears, seemingly, of, of not even understanding what was underneath the tears, or where that feeling came from. But, but somehow, intuitively, I knew I just had to, I had to let it come into awareness. It's just this not concluding anything from it. We can take the lines, I thought the Dustin Hoffman character, where whatever was happening, he would say, that is nothing, <laughs> you know? And I could feel there was a glee under that, where I was thinking, wow, you can see that from the Holy Spirit's perspective, no matter what it would, be, it would be, no matter what the feeling would be, no matter what the appearance would be, even when there's a great temptation, you know, where, you know, you saw the, the, the woman character, and hey, she just, at one point, she went ballistic. She just went ballistic. Like, it went way beyond what she could conceive or hold of, and, and he was like, what? That is nothing. <laughs> and it would be no matter what would happen, you know, he'll, he's still alive. The way he was successfully. And so, just when they come in and they walk in the door and they think, like, now, that, now that's the end of the show. That is nothing. You know, he, he was always like, so it was the ego always making the turn, but we could, but the spirit can also play the, and that is nothing game because there's a sense of of truth underneath it. You want to come to a place no matter what comes up, no matter what is intense and dark or whatever it feels, or hopelessness or meaninglessness or whatever, that's that is truthfully what's under it. Or you probably remember like in the Truman show when Truman finally tries to escape and overcomes his fear of water, and as he sets sail, and as he's sailing, 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 and Kristoff finally finds him, and, uh, you know, he just brings and centralizes a storm over him, and, you know, and he hit him again, hit him again, the viciousness comes up from Kristoff, hit him again, hit him again, until he seems to be laying over like the side of the boat that's kind of half capsized and he seems to have drowned. And everybody's like, 
even before it reaches that point, the one man says, you know, stop it, you're going to kill him. And he just is more than vicious wherever, you know. I brought him into this world, I can take him out. He's the ego control, desire for vengeance completely exposed, treating Truman as some kind of this hero, and then coming in with such viciousness. I brought him in and I can take him out. Like, oh, I could kill him. You know, not even trying to hide the death wish. It was very evident. And then, um, you know, and then ultimately, when Truman says, in case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, you know, and they say cease transmission, then this look on Christoph's face, almost like, oh, <coughs> Cease transmission. Imagine that you reach a point in your mind where you, you reach a point of stillness. Cease projection. Oh my God. Cease projection. <laughs> That's what this is all about. It's, it's about going with... Because remember what Truman's response is, you know, when he gets, hit him again, hit him again, you know, and was like, you're going to have to kill me. You know, he was absolutely not going to give up, regardless of what was coming at him. That's how it feels. He, he just starts singing a song. <laughs> he was ready to just kill him and he's singing a song. And isn't that what we're ended up doing? We'll probably end up having sing-alongs like we had yeah, last night. That's great. Da, 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 da. We're just going, going, going. <laughs> this is saying it's be less talking and more just more singing. sing, sing, yeah. sing, sing. And remember the glee of that experience mm. of singing together at the top of our lungs. Mm. Those beautiful songs, singing with, singing the Christmas songs, you know. That's, that's like, less like allowing everything to rise up in a song. And Didn't you quote something like that today? The words, or voice was only meant to sing? So I, I yeah. don't, you said something yeah. like that. Yeah. Joyful noise. Joy, make a joyful noise. Make like, a joyful noise. The voice was only meant to sing. It was never meant, it was never meant for anything else. Hmm. And how happy we are singing, yeah. you know? It's like, oh, maybe there's something to that. There's a clue there. We're just singing in happiness. The singing mystics. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. all of our lives have been, boo, you know, there's something on the screen. It's like, ooh. You're like, huh? You got that? You feel so happy with it? Try that one. Try that one. And then we have to have that same spunk. That's nothing! <laughs> you know, you've got to keep... Is that all you've got? Is that all you've got? Yeah. Is that the best you can do? You know, you have to have the spunk over that, you know, that, that no matter what it is. So it's not, it turns everything from hopeless into, is that the best you can do? And then that just grows stronger, stronger, stronger into awareness. And so even the part in the Course where Jesus says, make your invulnerability manifest. Ooh, that's a strong call. He doesn't say make your your depression manifest or your fear or your sadness, but we but we are onto it that we we have to see we can't hide it. That's the key. It's the whole key is having that allowance to let it like a dark cloud to move through. We don't when a storm is coming. We don't try to say stop the clouds, stop the clouds, you know. They have to, they have to move through. Everyone's had the experience when a storm's coming. You just have to let it move through. It takes a lot of faith sometimes. Mm -hmm. I heard today they had a tornado in Northern California. <laughs> so as we, you, as we move along with the script, you know, strange weather patterns and <laughs> strange everything. everything. Strange everything, but we, we can't really it's becoming more interpret gross. anything. Yeah. More evident. Yes. Yeah, I don't want to lose the feeling because I had 
a, a real reaction just before uh, Nikita said what she said. I felt the same thing. And then what came to me was, I mean, why the hell do we do projects? Like, fuck SEO. You know, fuck the live TV show. What are we, what are we doing? And I don't want to get stuck there, but I, that's, I, I, can, I can go there. In fact, I was there. And I was going to say, well, so why the hell do we do anything? No, it's, it's the purpose. In other words, if, if the world was made in hatred, and it was, mm -hmm. the down, then, <laughs> then if, there is, if there is another purpose that would turn a hateful, spiteful, fearful, vicious dream into another experience of the dream, because he says all your time is spent in dreaming, your, your nighttime dreams are fantasies, your daytime dreams are fantasies, so if it's all your time spent in dreaming, and there's only one way to wake up, and that's to experience the dream in a new way, with a new purpose, then it must be that we need to strengthen that new purpose, because if the new purpose was fully in mind, then there would be no difference between a project and a nuclear mm -hmm. explosion. Actually, they'd be the same in that state of mind. And, but the whole point is to reach that state of mind. Yeah. And I was talking a bit about relationships, because you were talking about relationship, and I was saying, well, the spirit has to redirect what the ego made. Not saying you should just go, I will never have another relationship again, because they're special. Because people say that, how can I, they write in, how can I avoid special relationship? Well, <laughs> avoid? What do you mean avoid? You know, you're in, you're swimming in the pool of, of it. So now you've got to be lifted up higher and higher, and, then, and maybe eventually out, out of the pool. But that's the Holy Spirit's job. So really, that, it, that is the purpose behind the projects, and we all know that when, when we're just in that happy flow, it doesn't really feel like there's a person doing a project. It's like time drifts by without its touch upon you. You know, there's, there's, no, there's no even awareness of the passage of time in that experience, because that's the new purpose, and that purpose is so strong that it dispels the passage of time, the experience of the passage of time. That's, you know, you're onto something when that happens. But we're not doing projects to produce something. Abraham Maslow was an amazing teacher. He talked about being values. When he talked about self-actualization, and he said, for, this, for the one that's self-actualized, there is no difference between means and end. That's bringing the Alpha and the Omega together, where it's all present. You're in the joy of the flow. Or as Lisa was saying the other day, you were just saying, observe, like, it's like I'm just observing. Mm. There's, there's nothing else but the observing. And, or today, there's no need to go anywhere, because I am everywhere. Mm -hmm. That's the same kind of experience. It's a vast experience. But that, that's why everything has to be seen through what, what is it for? That one little question, what is it for? There would be no point to making a movie, no point to doing live TV, no point to SEO, no point to rankings, no point to anything, without the sense that, that I need to teach and learn, I need to strengthen this in awareness so that I behold a new purpose for the world, because it was made in hatred. And all the roadways generated from that hatred, all roads lead to nowhere, all roads lead to death. Every scenario and situation that comes from that linear cause and effect projection, you know, is, is death itself. Even though you can call some happy and some sad, that's what the world does.
the world breaks everything up into happy memories and sad memories, happy situations and, and fearful ones. And it seems to be like a game where you try to hopefully end up with more happy than sad. Like you can win the game with 50, 51 percent. And that, what kind of God would have anything to do with, with winning with 51 percent? Like an electoral vote. <laughs> Our winner tonight with 50 point, 50 point one percent is, you know, this, there is no winners and losers. So to me that's part of that surrender. It was, it was letting go of trying to judge the, th the things, which things are more valuable than others and so forth, and just getting into that surrender, that flow of, of the prayer at the beginning of the book. The first edition was page 24, the third edition is 28. I am here only to be truly helpful. That prayer, if you give yourself over to that prayer, I am here only to be truly helpful. I am here to represent Him who sent me. I do not have to worry about what to say or what to do, for He who sent me will direct me. I am content, there's a great word, I'm content to be wherever He wishes, knowing He goes there with me. And I will be healed as I let Him teach me to heal. So, that's what the projects are all about, letting Him teach me how to heal. Because there's a crack of openness, like, I need it. And you wouldn't even ask for it if you, if you didn't, weren't aware that there was a need for it. And that's exactly what Helen Schuckman and Bill Thetford did. At some point of the dictation from Jesus, he said, well, just wait a minute, can we ask one just tiny little question? How did this happen in the first place? <laughs> and, you know, and Jesus said, well, that's a good question. And, but, he said, you can tell by the way that you're feeling that you believe that it did. He wouldn't even agree that it was a fact. That it happened. But he, would say, he said, but you can tell by the way that you're feeling that you believe that it did. And that's the ultimate sense where the sadness and the frustration comes in, is from the belief that it did. It's a belief that the hypothetical world uh, has a reality. Hypothetical, what do you mean hypothetical? As if the separation occurred, that's what Linear time is. It's, a, it's an as if. You're dealing with a major as if. Even though it's just completely hypothetical. There's no basis, no truth, no reality whatsoever. And in fact, I think it's kind of fun. At first, you can think of it as maybe like a challenge, but then. Then it's like, oh, okay, well, if that's the case, then, then really it doesn't matter. Like you kept saying, what, what are you supposed to do? What are you supposed to do? Whatever you're supposed to do doesn't matter. Whatever you think you have to do doesn't matter. Whatever you think you should do, which is a big one, doesn't even matter. But what is it for? matters. So, if you contemplate a project, if you contemplate doing a function, like for example, we were out there earlier and Suzanne was out and Nikita was there, got herself something to eat on the table by herself, and then the cat came over and looked, got up on the chair, then got up on the table, Suzanne wasn't around, so Nikita kind of threw a few arms in the air, almost playfully, like, like, okay, sweetie, I love you, I'm, I'll play like I'm shooting you. And she went kind of like this, and then the cat just looked at her and went, you love me. <laughs> You're not gonna, you don't really want me off this table. You're just moving your arms as if, it was like it's a theater, Academy of Warrior over there, going like this. And, and then, 
And then the cat stayed up there. He appreciated the beautiful flailing arms, but he knew he really didn't want him off. And then, I think a minute or two later, I get up to walk in and I look and there's food. Was it potatoes? There's potatoes on the wood. And the cat is eating off the wood on there. And, and I was saying, I don't think that's what Suzanne <laughs> talked to everybody about, because there's wood. There's wood and there's potatoes on and the cat's up there and this and this and so, you know, and it, there's no resolution in terms of form with the cat and the table and everything like this. I did hear somebody else saying, you know, if you feed a cat on the table, that cat is going to keep coming up when everybody is eating, they'll be thinking, they all have to love me as much as Nikita. This is a very spiritual community. They have to adore me just as much as Nikita does. So they're going to, they'll give in. They're going to let me eat, eat out of their plates, out of their bowls, drink out of their things. You can see it, it goes no end. But then the whole scenario ultimately could be used as a point of forgiveness when you come back to what is it for? And trusting guidance, and because I've been in spiritual communities for over two decades, and everyone will say, that's your guidance. <laughs> or I used to have a friend, she would say, this is my guidance, that's your guidance. And I'd say, how many Holy Spirits are there? And they'd, just one. But the Holy Spirit has different guidance for you than for me. And then everybody started into, my Holy Spirit says. And then you have a group of however, 5, 10, 15 people, my Holy Spirit, well my Holy Spirit, well my Holy Spirit, well my Holy Spirit, well, my Holy Spirit's louder than your Holy Spirit, my, you know, and it's just, it's just words. There's no, there's no depth, there's no meaning, there's no presence when there's these competing Holy Spirits, <laughs> competing Holy Spirits, you know, it sounds silly, but that's the way it plays out. So, really it does come down to, it's not so much about the behaviors, it's not so much about the forms, or the shoulds, or the ought-tos, or the have-tos, or the rules, or the da-da-da-da-da. It's, it's really about what truly is it for, and am I willing to go all the way with that question? Am I willing to take what is it for all the way to the Holy Spirit? Honestly, you know, that's what we're getting at. Because without that, there, there would seem to be no resolution. You say potato, I say potato, you say tomato, I say tomato, potato, potato, tomato, tomato. Let's call the whole thing off. You can see at the end, that's the purpose. Let's call the whole thing off, because who's right and who's wrong when love is gone from awareness? Really, that's the question that you should ask yourself. It's never about, should I do this or not do this, or can I get away with this? Can I feed the cat on the table? When Suzanne is gone, Suzanne's almost always here, and then she goes away to Heber for one day to visit her family. You can see, it, that's what happens all the time with, in families. In fairy tales, when the cat's away, the mice will play. But when the cat's not away, the mice don't play. It's a serious matter, keeping an eye out for the cat. So, th there still is this sense of individual or personal freedom that is going on. When, when you're still fishing for freedom, it's still something saying, what can I do, what can I get away with? And you see it all the time. That's, that's why there's so much what seems to be, even though you have laws and you have seeming consequences, people will do all kinds of things. Like, have you ever seen these hidden camera shows? Just an amazing array of behavior. 
when people have the thought that no one is watching, because that's part of the, the individual freedom thing. Mm -hmm. So I think this is really deep, because, you know, we're really coming down. When you wake up in the day, you know, with, decide the kind of day you want, rules for decision, and if I make no decisions by myself, then that is the day that will be given me. But it, there has to be a level of, a very deep level of self-honesty with that. What kind of day do I want? Do I want a happy day, a joyful day, a gleeful day, a fun day, a flowing day? Yes, well, it's guaranteed. If I make no decisions by myself, but as soon as I try to make a decision apart from the whole universe, then that's where this crazy illusion of guilt, or being trapped, or being sad, or being fearful, or whatever, that the wiggle room, it's like the mind saying, come on, just a little bit of wiggle room here. A lot of times people have a lot of guilt around money, and a lot of guilt around the body, a lot of guilt around the perception of sickness, you know, like there's some, they you know there's something, something strange going on with, with those things. And with the whole concept of community, many people would say, what, what is your form of government in that community? If you, if you throw out the idea of com community, people will just ask, what, what is the, who's governing the community? In the world, that's a, seen as a very practical question, although I would say it's not really practical at all. The only practical question is, what is it for? So it's a single person, okay? What is that for? Who, what's behind that? So it's a couple. Okay, you've, you've got a couple. You can be legally married or you can just do a ceremony like you did and Nicholas. It doesn't matter. What's the purpose of a couple? What's the purpose of getting out of bed in the morning? These are all really the same question. <laughs> what's the purpose of a community? What's the purpose of breathing? They're all really the same question. We were at the movie today and we watched a preview. What was the, the name of the preview movie? Choice. Choice. Go yeah. well, ooh. <laughs> Big letters, choice. And some of the lines, even in the, pre, in the trailer, were, were kind of interesting. Do you really have a choice at all? Jesus says, well, while you believe that you set up a world of opposites, then we're going to have to work with that seeming thing that you have, that characteristic of choice. You know, you've invested it in opposites, so we're going to have to use it to get you out of that investment. So that's good too, that's another good thing to know. Even with projects, there's still a choice point underneath. But actually it's not really about the projects. It's more of a choice point of purpose. That's the, the whole thing. If somebody just, I saw that picture of Sweetie with the little purpose is the only choice book. <laughs> See, he's, he's here. Now that's Sweetie's purpose, he's selling <laughs> He's selling purposes the He's a sales, he's a sales kitty. Can I speak to your sales kitty? Meow. Yeah. Or you could say he's, he's a symbol of innocence. If your mind is innocent, you can fully see him as the symbol of innocent. But if you have, if there's any guilt in the mind, then Sweetie suddenly becomes 
a reflection and a witness for whatever that other thing is. It could even be freedom. Maybe there's something you see, it was sweetie eating food off of the table, you might think, now oh, that's a free cat. <laughs> but really, ultimately, is there such a thing as a free cat? You have to ask yourself that too. Or a free, free human being. All the stuff we listened to for years, you know. Oh, be glad you live in a free country. There are, oh, there are unfree countries? Yes, we, would, we were told Russia was one of those. They're not free. We're free. Free countries? Unfree countries. Probably, being growing up Russian, they were telling you something else. <laughs> we're free. <laughs> They're not. You know, but there are no free countries, there's no free persons, there's no free kitty cats. There's no free lunch. <laughs> So this, this is actually important. We're, you know, this is, this is very important. And it's good that Nikita and Jeff have raised this up. And that you've, you actually have allowed it to come up. Because that, that does rise up in the mind, like, well, what's the point of anything then? <laughs> that's, that's it. Is that, can you follow that? Or not? What would see the purpose is to, to heal the mind. Uh, but it sounds, I mean, it just <coughs> seems so huge. I mean, it's everything. It's you know, the whole thing. That they, everything. You know, so then I think, well, I'm just fucking insane, you know, it's, I mean. Yeah, that's a thought too, but you're letting that thought kind of pass through. And all, you know, remember that line at the end of um, Simone, we're fine with fake. Dad, just don't lie about it. So the lying would be to, to hide and protect the thought, or to accept it as true and real. Except which, I'm insane, or the, yeah. yeah, yeah. Except I am insane as a real thought, okay. or conclude. Well, here's all these experiences I've had, and now I will conclude from that I am insane. And then, really, that's what we're being asked to do: is not to conclude, to stay with mm -hmm. the the practice, to stay with the the devotion. Just another insane thought to think I'm insane. Yeah. That the parade. We did have a parade here last year, mm -hmm. where we all went to the parade and watched yeah. the parade go by mm -hmm. down Main Street. They threw candy. Sweets. Trying to tempt us. <laughs> Everyone in the whole area, much less Camus, was included in the parade, but not us. We, we didn't have a didn't have living a miracle banner <laughs> with some kind of a big truck with all of us waving, <laughs> dancing, and singing, singing, singing. If you we walk beside you, we love our own marching band. Fire. <laughs> No we had a parade in California, you remember that? Yeah, I do. Yeah. <laughs> they, come, they put us at the end of the parade and then they, and here they come, you can hear them getting closer. They're coming here, trailing our parade this year. The living miracle. Myself is ruler of the universe. Myself. We don't know, it's a strange song they're singing. <laughs> it's never been sung in public in Canvas before. And they're even dancing to it. <laughs> Why are they so happy? <laughs> There's a whole gang of them. They had to get a big float. Miss, Miss Universe. 
<laughs> yeah. Um, hey, like, <laughs> he's like our, our, our like that's it. We are ruler of the universe. <laughs> <laughs> Every of our big banner collector we throw out some candy. We throw out the, the, the business cards. Of we throw out business cards and, and DVDs, in, instruments for peace. Yeah. With, with little airplanes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And they go, what the heck is this? Twelve Instead steps. What? I'm not upset for the reason. I think. I feel. Can we wear crowns and tunics? Tunics. 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 I like the rules. Edgeware. 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 Well, used to have the heads and it's called Edgeware. Mystic simplistic wear. Mystic simplistic. She's even got a guy in Australia yeah, to design. To she met a guy who would design it's it. It's all a matter of timing. It's all coming in. It's Flesh all coming out. In. The, the tunics. Yeah. <laughs> but even with the tunics, you would have to ask, what is it what for? Is for? What is it for? Simplicity. If there was joy yeah. and fun, like the simplicity. dropped in. Simplicity. Yeah. No choice. Like our food. Just add water. Just add water. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at like AC's face. Yeah, AC's head goes, like, oh god. <laughs> just to forfeit. <laughs> <laughs> but she won't be able to use her container. We need a Tupperware. Because <laughs> <laughs> we'll all eat it all up. One, like, one serving and it's gone. <laughs> I'm with you, AC. <laughs> This is a, we have these little camps, we have the, the food camps, the cat, the cat on the table camps, you know, this, see, you just, it doesn't matter, you have to really be clear of your purpose, because it, it would be stark raving madness and insanity, that's the other option. Well, that's you. Purpose, or stark raving madness. <laughs> Yeah. It'd be a circus. It would be a circus. It's a circus. What was that movie? What about where... me? What about what I need? What yeah. about my guidance? Yeah. What about this? Yeah. <laughs> what was that movie where they started, they lost their sense of smell and taste and perfect sense? I could see that happening. So that's what it is. If you don't let the parade go by, it turns into a stationary yeah. circus. Yeah. <laughs> it's just right. Yeah. Because oh, yeah. you stop it. It just if you stop yeah. it, if you stop it. So you have to yeah. let it walk. You start well, to participate. If you participate in the prayer, you start questioning why he's a clown. It's, it's, you're in a circus. It's madness. Yeah. Yeah. And that's good though. Anything that brings you closer to that point, because that's the point when before when you came in and weeks ago when you were all upset, you said it was like that thing about the cat about the cat, what the cat could and couldn't do, I think you use the word, that's the last straw. You see, that's how it goes. Anything we make is the last straw in the world, then it's almost like that feeling of, wow, it's, it's, so, it's insane, it's mad. And to think that I can make a choice that will transcend the madness, oh, well, that's, what's the chance of that? And so then the mind says, well, I don't have a very good chance of that, so it's going to take a stand. Like AC could say, that, those packet foods <laughs> thing, I've been with this it. community for years, I'm I've, out of here. I've hung in there with Suzanne for all this time, and now <laughs> she's getting these spicy things, and you've got to cook them, and they're extra work, and they're supposed to be simple, but they're it's even more work. Friends. And she could be tempted to say, that's, those packets are the last straw, or for you, the cat. You could say, Suzanne is controlling that cat, I love that cat, I want that cat to be free, and her making rules about that cat and the tables and food, that's the last straw, I'm out of here. And then the mind concludes, this isn't it, whatever this is, it can make it, it can draw a line in the sand. Some people do that with families. Mm -hmm. Somebody says something and go, I will never go back to that family again for a draw. I will never speak to this person ever again. You know, those, those nevers turn into to grievances. You know, it's almost like you gotta, you're protecting something then. 
And if you're going to stay true to your word and never, you know, and never say never. Never say never. Because only really the Christ, only the Holy Spirit could can use the word never and always. Mm -hmm. And he does in the Course, you'll notice. Jesus doesn't avoid the nevers or he doesn't avoid avoid the always. But he means it. It's like it's coming from an actual state of truth. I'm never upset for the reason I think. He doesn't mean mostly. Yeah. He means never. <laughs> or when he said at the end before he ascended, I'm with you always, even unto the end of time. Always means always. <laughs> you know. But but it has to come that it has to come from a fact. <coughs> if it comes from a concept, then then you can never say never or always with anything to do with form. Yeah, yeah with anything to do with form, yeah. I was saying on the ride, we were coming back from the movie and I said, I have this feeling like 2016 is going to have a lot of surprises in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because we're just getting to the point mm -hmm. where we would need surprises to bring us back into God's will. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> So, the you know, unexpected. You yeah, know, exactly. Possibilities. So we might as well I'm welcome totally it. I'm totally in love with it. It's just like, well yeah, open it. up to everything. Yeah. New. Yeah. Something really new and beautiful. Big. Yeah, I think we've talked about this for years too, because even Suzanne was saying at one point at the monastery, like, why? What, we have all these, we have these guidelines, and then we talk about these things, and relationships, and assignments, and and food, and all these different things, and she was like, can't we loosen it up a bit? And I was like, well, I think we're, we're growing into we're that. We're heading that way. We're heading in, in that direction. Not quite there she yet. was like, we should have tunics. Just wear tunics. And what's the thing around sex? Why shouldn't anybody be able to do whatever they, they want to do? And I've had people recently ask me in the last month, they were like, well, this Polly and Moore thing, um, they said, if it's all an illusion anyway, it's mm -hmm. like, you know, but, and so, but then they almost answered their own question. They said, hmm, I think, I think you'd have to be quite spiritually evolved to even be able to, to have that, some kind of a symbol of allowance for such a thing. Because, because why? Because judgment, comparison, yeah. jealousy, envy, those things just come roaring in, and before you know it, you know, you've got havoc. There's no consistency, there's, there's not a stableness. You were saying there's more of a stableness that seems to be developing. It's getting stronger and stronger. And then, if the stableness gets stronger and stronger, and you get more and more stabilized in mind, then you could see that you would pretty much welcome anything that really surprised you. Because then you would go, huh, I must have had an expectation. How could I get surprised mm. if I didn't already have a prior expectation that was violated, mm. seemingly, not really, but violated by what seemed to occur. You see how deep it is. But also you can see, wouldn't you want to have it play out in a way that you can find the solution which is guaranteed by God. But this, yes. Yeah. Wouldn't you want to yeah. be funneled right into that solution where you go, ah, it's so easy. Mm -hmm. Like this tiny little tweak of mind, when you finally make it, you go, oh my God. That's it? That's it? It was so simple. It wasn't some kind of huge thing that you had to fight and battle for. Yeah. At all, but it was the easiest little tweak in the mind that was always there, but it was just hidden. It was very disguised. Like the end of Divergence. Yeah, the, that was it. Very, such a little tweak. Yeah. So that's kind of exciting to, to go at it with that. Wide-eyed wonder. Yeah, wide-eyed wonder. 
Open-mindedness, that's the last characteristic. Yeah. I went on a trip one time and I think it was oh, when I first met Laura and Laura's husband, Ray, mm -hmm. up in Washington. You probably yeah. remember it. And I went up there and, and I was there and they were like, oh, this, this little kitten appeared and it was the most spunky, little, playful kitten. And we were all in the back and, and Ray and Laura were just like, oh my God. But they were, they were hushed at how joyful and playful and spunky this kitten was. We would be sitting around meditating, the kitten would be jumping up on the table. His we name like, was Peace. His name was Peace and he was playful and he was delightful and everything. And then um, we left and Suzanne and I flew back down and then we got this phone call. I think we were right in the, the airport, airport yeah. right by the... Uh, the baggage claim, and they went, Laura's like, I ran over Peace and killed him. Oh no. Mm -hmm. On the way, On the way but she back, back from the airport. Back from the airport, she pulled in and she ran over with the car. She ran over and killed Peace. It was a lesson. Even the slightest expectation that I will have that playful little thing, but, but you know, that's the beauty of anything in this world is it's got one lesson that it's teaching us is that the playfulness mm -hmm. is within us. Mm -hmm. The playfulness is who we are. It's mm -hmm. not in the object. See, there is no object of playfulness. Mm -hmm. Object of innocence, object of love. And that's a huge lesson. That's really the only lesson mm -hmm. that there is, that there's nothing outside. Mm -hmm. There's no inside and outside. It's just all, everything, everywhere. It's a huge <coughs> lesson. And when you think of it, if that's the whole lesson, that's what time is for, to learn just that and nothing more, mm -hmm. then, you know, there should be some kind of excitement, like that you're going for the highest, highest and only lesson that, that could ever be learned. If you just hold that in mind when you when you wake up, it's like, wow, here is another day to be about my purpose and to dive deeper into that purpose and to find the purpose that that transcends the ego entirely. I'm just thinking about that movie. Every time they, they well, not every time, but the important twists always came because of a song. I was just thinking about, you keep hearing this, the, what is it, what's, I can't remember the quote, but that's what the voice is for, is to sing. To sing. They hired Willie to sing a song. But when he saw the, com or the the thing about the report of the the Firefly Girl, he started right into the the song, the song of guilt, and then finally Dustin Hoffman said, "I don't think that's appropriate for why we're here." <laughs> well, th we could apply that with everything. What song are we singing throughout the day, and is it appropriate for why we're here or not? You know, there it is, that's, that's perfect, that's the purpose. That's the purpose of the song. There's also a point where Willie says, oh, I'm going to go out and get drunk, and there was no judges, 
go out and get drunk, just write the song. <laughs> you know, I'm not suggesting that people get drunk, but there's just no judgment. There's like, okay, but just bring me the song. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, um, like, I want to share something that, I don't know if words can convey it, so it's a little bit of like, I don't want to water it down. It's just been such an amazing day today. Like, I really experience like this consistency all day like just such a purity and I went to see my family and uh, it was the same as being here and that's just huge it's mm -hmm. like there was no difference there was just no difference at all I can't explain it, but I was just so grateful I sat outside this morning as the sun was coming up, and I, I picture every single one of you in my mind as just the symbols of this incredible love, and I felt it, and then I was there, and it was like, I'm playing Monopoly with this three-year-old I've never met, and it was just like, it was all the same, you know? <laughs> hmm. And I'm so happy, it's like... Just to, just to walk through all of this and just be able to have this happen. <laughs> like, yes, it's, and it's so simple, mm -hmm. you know, that's how I feel. It's like, mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's peace and it's just simple and... Yeah, that's all. I just, just incredible gratitude for this, how the Spirit loves us, and just keep the feet on the fire, and let's just help burn up, because I just feel like this is, it's like a day of witnessing to that, like, oh my God, and it's not any bells or whistles, it's just, Yeah, that's a witness. Jeff read that thing at the beginning of our broadcast today. Christmas is the end of sacrifice. And Jeff got all choked up yeah. mm -hmm. with one word, like, let go, let go of everything. And it was like, and then you just had to stop. You just were overwhelmed by that. But that's the end of sacrifice, is to let everything go that's not important. And yeah, and that would even be the, like these ideas of of form. Yeah. This or there. It was just my there. mind. I could feel that. It's mm -hmm. like these symbols, you know. It's almost like everything's been given a new meaning and it's the same. It doesn't matter if it's somebody on the street or somebody in this house or somebody mm -hmm. that's seen you. It's just yeah. like it was mind. It was a stream of mind. Just this purity. Sameness, that's all the word yeah. that keeps coming. <coughs> playing with Cat, playing Monopoly with the three year old. Yeah. The same feeling. Being in the studio, being at lunch, it was just. <laughs> That's in the course, make this year different by making it all the same. Like a, almost like a, a wish, a prayer for the new year. And Jesus, make this year different by making it all the same. And then if that's the desire of your heart, then that's the experience that you must experience too.
computer's calling me, so. <laughs> Design a website or something. <laughs> <There's> <laughs> May we all give ourselves the same permission you gave your mind to say. Yeah, that's beautiful. To just totally be. Mm. Just be. I think I've heard <laughs> speechless or no words. <laughs> That's supposed to come out more. No words. No words. Mm. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. That was a great movie. Thank you.